This week in Radio Theatre, we present A Woman Alone by Ron Evans and produced by Anne Free. <laughs> Still got my reservations about it, Katie. Don't worry, we're on holiday and that's what counts. I don't fancy spending it in a crummy little hotel that's likely to fall down any day. You've let your imagination run wild, Alan. That isn't how Angie described it at all. She said it was small and run by a spinster lady. It conjures up visions. Well, I've seen a photograph of the Wellmont Rise Hotel and it's very nice. Small and set in a lovely garden close to the sea. Looked after by a little old lady and alive with cats. Oh, she isn't old, Alan. I remember Angie saying the owner was a very smart woman in her early 40s. And how long is it since Angie stayed there? Oh, last summer. She went down to Durban on the spur of the moment and couldn't find a reasonably priced place to stay that wasn't already full, so she slept in her car the first night. The next day, she was talking to a woman in a tea room who told her about the Wellmont Rise Hotel. And when Angie got there, she was very pleasantly surprised. It was, well, it was sort of continental. All right, we're passing by down now. I'll know the truth very soon. Ah, yes. Mr. and Mrs. Rockhall, isn't it? That's right. Yes, we'll be in 22. If you'll just sign in here, Mr. Rockhall. Right. Uh, Joseph, get the gentleman's luggage and take it to 22. Yeah, all right, mm. here, here are your keys. Thank you. And I hope you have a pleasant stay. Thank you. If there's anything you need, please let me know. There. Wasn't I right? It's very nice. A lot better than a bleak holiday flat. Oh, and there's even a small kitchen in here. I tell you, Alan, it's a lot better than I expected. Mm, I agree. It, it, it's, it's comfortable. The bed's nice and firm. And look at the view from the balcony, the beach and the sea. I can't see a thing wrong. All right, all right, I was wrong. Yes, it, it is very nice. Oh, but as for Miss Abbott, she certainly isn't the old dragon of your imagination. She was very smart. Fashionable, actually. Mm, plenty of money, by the look of her. Mm. Angie found her a bit distant. Helpful, but uh, cold. Oh, yes, and very unsociable. She didn't seem like that to me, though, did she to you, Alan? Oh, she was polite. That's all I can say for now. Well, what shall we do with ourselves? What do you think? The beach, of course. And then? And then a drive along to Dairy Beach and dinner at a five-star hotel. And then? There's more? Let me see now. Mm. How about a movie? Granted. And then? Oh, hey, let's not plan too far ahead. <laughs> All right. After the movie, we can play it by ear. Well, come on, let's get unpacked. I can't wait to flaunt myself on the beach. Oh, I'm <laughs> exhausted. Well, it is two o'clock in oh, the morning. I haven't been up so late since... <laughs> well... It must have been on our honeymoon. Oh, what a day. And there are 12 more to oh. go. Mm, but I think I'll sleep in tomorrow. Wonder what time the maid comes in to clean. Oh, don't worry about that now. Alan, did you look in Miss Abbott's window as we passed? I don't make a habit of staring through people's windows. I couldn't help it. She was sitting upright in a chair, reading, hmm? still fully dressed. <laughs> She must be something of a late bird. Maybe she's waiting for her secret lover to arrive. Well, one never knows. Uh, seriously, though. Did you look at her eyes when we checked in? Mm, no, I can't say I did. There was a faint smile on her lips, but those eyes were ice cold. A woman without a speck of emotion. Oh, no. I can't imagine Miss Abbott having a lover. Mm, well, it must be the coast air. But your imagination is running riot. Not in this instance, Katie. Ah, oh, Miss Abbott hates men. That is something I could sense coming from her. You said a moment ago that she was without emotion. Hatred is an emotion. Don't quibble. You know what I mean. What emotion there is in her is confined to hatred of the male sex. Well, perhaps she had a nasty experience in her younger day, like um, assault or, or even rape. Yes, that's possible. 
Anyway, so we'll forget about her and concentrate on celebrating the first night of the holiday. You betcha. <laughs> One more drink and we'll go. That's a deal. I've been thinking, Alan. Let's do something different tomorrow. Like? Oh, I'm not sure. Well, we could drive somewhere. The Wild Coast, perhaps. Do a spot of gambling. Suits me. Oh, great. Uh, who was it who phoned you this afternoon? Mr. Hawksworth. Oh, dear me. Even when you're on holiday, they can't leave you alone. What did you want? Oh, just a couple of pointers on a case I was investigating a couple of weeks ago. Oh, what kind of case? The communist arson. A fellow insured his garage for a million, and a month later, it went up in smoke. Ooh, sounds naughty. It was, and he wasn't very clever about it either. Being an insurance investigator is never dull. Especially the weird hours you have to work. Oh, that can't be helped, I'm afraid. And now you have to help out even while you're on holiday. It was just a few points, nothing more. The job still has to go on, even while I'm away. <laughs> well, old Hawksworth won't be able to get hold of you tomorrow. Uh, let me see. Six, seven, eight. Oh, dear me. There's only eight days left. Time's simply flown. Enjoyed yourself? Oh, tremendously. Oh, this place is lovely. It's, um... It's just Miss Abbott who puts me off a bit. And you was right about her after all. The woman is antisocial. Three times I've attempted to have a chat with her and she's just brushed me off. Oh, I haven't even tried. Come on, let's skip that last drink and stroll back to the hotel. Alan, see that chap standing there? Hmm? What about him? Oh, nothing really. It's just an odd place to be loitering. Especially so late at night. It's none of our business. Come on. Oh, I see Miss Abbott's light still on. <laughs> Who cares? Oh, no, I was just, just thinking. I, uh... Oh, M Miss Abbott. Is something wrong? Oh, no, no. I, I, I was just startled to see you standing in the doorway like that. Just taking a few breaths of night air? Yes, it, it is rather pleasant. Mm. Good night, Mrs. Rockle. Oh, Mr. Rockle. Good, good night. night. Come on, come on. You can't sleep all day. Oh, 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 what time is it? It's nearly nine. Oh, well, there's no hurry, is there? No point in driving down to the Wild Coast too early. Oh, it's not that. Oh. I'm hungry. Unless you'd rather I went and had breakfast alone. No, 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 no. Wait for me. I'll be as quick as I can. Oh, who can that be? Well, there's one sure way of finding out. Good morning. You are Mr. Alan Rocco? Yes. Lieutenant for ECID. May I come in, please? Why, yeah, yes, of course. Thank you, sir. Have you uh, heard about what happened last night? Uh, my wife and I slept rather late. Has there been a robbery or something? A lot worse than that, I'm afraid. The owner of this hotel, Miss Abbott, was found dead two hours ago by one of the cleaners. De dead? Miss Abbott? I'm afraid so. Is Mrs. Rockwell in? She's in, in the bathroom. I'll, I'll call her. Katie, are you decent? I'm always decent. Who was it at the door? You'd better come out. It's a police officer and he wants to see you. Is something wrong? Miss Abbott is dead. Dead? What happened to her? Good morning, Mrs. Rockwell. Morning. I'm Lieutenant Fury of the CID. Tell me, when did you last see Miss Abbott? It must have been a, a little after midnight. Ten past twelve it was. Oh, this is terrible. How did she die? Well, I can't be certain as yet. Somehow an intruder got in and hit her over the head. Oh. When? This morning? A death occurred about one in the morning. Good heavens, just after we spoke to her, Alan. Did you know Miss Abbott very well? Oh, hardly at all. She wasn't very social. Mm, yes, that's what most of the hotel residents say. Where was Miss Abbott when she spoke to you? Standing near the hotel entrance. The door to her flat was wide open. I see. I wonder if... There was no sign of a break-in. It is possible that the killer was invited in, somebody she knew. 
Did she say why she was standing there? Well, she was getting a breath of night air. Alan, what about that man? What man? Oh, some fellow who was loitering just round the corner from the entrance. I thought it was rather funny at the time. It, it was so late, and he didn't look the type to be seen hanging around. Can you describe him? He was tall, well-dressed, about 50-ish, I'd say. Mm -hmm. What was he wearing? A dark-colored suit. Oh, yes, and he had graying hair. Yes, combed straight back. I see. Anything else? Well, I only caught a quick glimpse of his face. He, he quickly turned away as we passed. That's what made me suspicious. But he looked nothing like the type of man you could suspect of robbery. Miss Abbott's flat was burgled, I take it? Uh, no. No, so far as we can make out, no money or any of her jewelry was taken. But the flat was turned over as though the killer was hurriedly searching for something. Oh. When I go back to the station later, would you mind coming with me? I'd like to show you some photographs. Perhaps you might recognize your mystery man in one of them. Well, uh, I've got some other residents to see yet. I'll be back in about an hour. Thank you very much for your time, oh. Mr. Rockwell, Mrs. Rockwell. Anything we can do to help? Well, isn't that a shocker? Awful. Poor woman beaten to death no more than a few meters away. It's that man we saw. I'm sure of it, Alan. Oh, you can't say that. For all we know, he could have been waiting for someone to come out. Perhaps waiting to give his wife a lift home. There are all sorts of reasons why he could have been standing there. Oh, well. Bang goes our trip to the Wild Coast. We can go later this afternoon. It's less than two hours' drive. Oh, no, I'd rather stay here and see what happens. Are you being ghoulish? No. I'm just interested. Aren't you? I mean, your job is mostly investigation. Yes, insurance fraud, not murder. It's investigation just the same. You could help the police. Oh, come on, Katie. I'm sure the police are capable of managing without my help. In fact, they probably resent it. Why should they? Surely solving the mystery is more important. When the lieutenant comes back, offer to help him. No. N-O, no. Oh, don't be so mean, Alan. We're on holiday, remember? Yes, but this is exciting. It won't spoil our holiday. Last night you were complaining because old Hawksworth phoned me. Now you want me to go out and find a murderer. For me, Alan. No. Think of it. A woman who lives alone and has no known friends. For some reason, she invites a man into her flat in the early hours of the morning. The man kills her, searches the flat for something. What was he looking for, Alan? He must have known her quite well. Now, doesn't that intrigue you? Yes, I'll admit it does. Well... All right, I'll, I'll give it some thought. Give me five minutes and we'll go for breakfast. And we can talk it over in detail and be back when the lieutenant calls for us. Inconsistency is Katie's middle name. Well, I don't think there's any point in looking any further. Well, I'm sorry we couldn't be much help in this direction. Uh, the man didn't look the type to be in your rose gallery anyway. No, he seemed more like a businessman or a, a banker than a crook. Hmm. Well, thanks for coming here. Yeah? I'll arrange for a car to take you back. Oh, thank you, Lieutenant. Well, go on, tell him, Alan. No, I don't think it would be wise right now. Tell me what? Oh, it's, it's nothing to do with the case. Well, not directly, if you know what I mean. What do you mean, Mrs. Rockwell? No, Katie. Alan is an insurance investigator, and oh. he's good. No, really good, Lieutenant. He wants to help you with the case, you know, to solve it. Look, it's very kind of you, but if you really think about it, you'll realize why I can't accept your offer. But thanks all the same. No, I don't understand. I have plenty of well-trained men at my disposal, Mrs. Rockwell. Yes, but Put you see, my... brakes on, Katie. Can't you understand what Lieutenant Furry means? We're on the list of suspects. He's hardly in a position to share information with me. Suspects? Are you really serious? Mrs. Rockwell... I, I mean, well, you can see we're trying to help. You'd have known nothing about this man lurking outside if it wasn't for us. To be blunt with you, Mrs. Rockwell, if there really was a man there, uh, you and your husband were the only ones to see him. Get off your soapbox, Katie. The lieutenant is only doing his job by looking at things from every possible angle. But why would we want to kill Miss Abbott? Go on, tell me that. Oh, come on, the lieutenant's got enough to do without listening to your indignant outbursts. Oh. There is one thing I'd like to ask you, though. Yes, Mr. Rockwell? What will happen to Miss Abbott's body? Has she any friends or relatives to see she has a decent funeral? Uh, we have traced one relative. Miss Abbott has a younger sister, a Miss Linda Abbott, who lives in Johannesburg. 
She's been informed and she's flying down this evening to make the arrangements. Oh, good. So there'll be no problems in that direction. I know. Thanks for your time. I'll come with you and organize the car. I'm surprised at you, Alan. I didn't know you'd be so chicken. Just because he's a policeman. We've nothing to hide. Suspects, indeed. Everyone who was in or visiting the hotel last night is automatically a suspect. Until the police can start sifting out their information. Now, don't be so darn uptight about All it. All right, so I'm overreacting. How are you going to handle it now? By driving down to the wild coast and forgetting all about it. Not on your life, Alan Rockall. We're going to see this through. Oh, can't you understand, Katie? There's nothing I can do without police cooperation. They could pull me in for interference. Not if you're careful. Order some more coffee, please, Alan. <clears throat> now, for instance, if you had a free hand, what would you do next? Search Miss Abbott's flat very carefully. Look for things that are out of character, things that don't fit in with her lifestyle. There's no way of doing that now. The police will have it sealed and guarded. But won't the police themselves have checked everything? Certainly. But even the police aren't perfect. A waiter, can you bring me some more coffee, please? Sir. For instance, the police will be looking directly for a murderer. Instead, I'll be looking into Miss Abbott's past, trying to find someone with a motive. I think it'll be a few days before our lieutenant starts on that particular angle. Then there's this sister, Linda Abbott. Yes, another spinster. I wonder how like her sister she is. The police will let her into the flat, surely. Yes, you have something there, Katie. The woman is sure to be as keen as anyone to see her sister's killer brought to justice. Yes, I think she'll be a great help. And we can grab her as soon as she arrives. Oh, no. The police will be spending most of the evening with her. Tomorrow would be the best time. Which means we can get the car and make a start for the Wild Coast, okay? Okay, Sherlock. We start sleuthing tomorrow. Enjoy the best of both worlds. Only two hours drive from Johannesburg and Pretoria and half an hour by air. The magnificent Sundown Ranch Hotel and Lion Park, just 10 kilometers from the Pilansburg Game Reserve and Sun City Resort. It offers an exciting escape from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Reasonable rates, excellent food, friendly service and comfortable air-conditioned rooms. It will ensure a memorable stay. Activities include tennis, squash, horse riding, the lion park, and much, much more. Call now to make your reservation on 014-573-1000. That's 014-573-1000. Or visit their website at www.restonations.co.za forward slash Sundown Ranch. The Sundown Ranch Hotel and Lion Park. Two worlds in one. And now, Act Two of A Woman Alone. It's her, all right. Well, that's a surprise. She strikes me as being the exact opposite of her sister. Are you sure it's her, Alan? Positive. Twice she went in and out of the flat while I was watching. And the tailor's dummy with her? Oh, must be her boyfriend. While they were talking, the car, they held hands. Mm, what a car. Mm, he could have bought a house for the price of it. Is it his? I'm pretty sure of it. He was driving and it has every conceivable extra. Oh, yes. Definitely a man's car. And no police around. Not a sign. They must have handed the flat over to her. So she and her boyfriend are alone in there? No. Nope. The boyfriend went off in the car. Better still. Yes. So if you'll finish putting on your war paint, we can go down and offer our condolences. That's very kind of you. Ken's a terrible shock. Oh, please excuse the place. Dennis and I will tidy it up later, and then we'll let two of the maids loose in here. The police tell me it's how Janice's killer left it. He was very thorough. Well, heaven knows what he was looking for. There was 300 rand in Janice's purse, and all her valuable jewelry is still on a box on the dressing table. My husband's an investigator. Would you like him to help find the killer? 
Well, I'm sure the police are quite efficient. I hardly think it's worth the cost of hiring a private detective. I mean, if the police fail, then uh, I might give it some... No, you've misunderstood me, Miss Abbott. My husband wouldn't charge you. We knew your sister, and we'd like to help, if you don't object. Oh, I don't object, naturally. Oh, good. Will you uh, be staying here for a while? No, I couldn't. Bit creepy, don't you think? My fiancé has booked us into a beachfront hotel for a week. We could see everything's done here for you. Oh, would you? That's very kind of you. I don't seem to have the heart. And did you see much of your sister? No. In fact, I haven't seen her since she bought this place. Well, when was that? Oh, must be 15 years now. So long ago. Didn't you get along well? <laughs> to be honest, no. Janice was a very quiet woman introspective and terribly, terribly conservative. We did write occasionally, but I was so busy I didn't answer the last few she wrote. Uh, what do you do? I'm a dress designer. I have my own salon in Johannesburg. It's called the Abbey Fashion House. <laughs> Abbey. Abbott, you see. <laughs> you seem a lot younger than your sister. Ten years. I'm 36. Oh. Yeah, she was more of a mother to me. We were brought up in an orphanage, you see. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. Our parents were killed in an air crash. There was an aunt living in Peter Maritzburg, Auntie Gladys, Mrs. Hines. She had arthritis pretty bad and couldn't look after us. Oh, it must have been a traumatic experience for you. Oh, it was. When I was eight, Janice left the orphanage. <laughs> I remember crying night after night for three years. Then, when Janice was 21, I was released into her care. I began to live again. Well, for a while. But even then, we didn't get along very well. Janice was stricter than any mother with me. When I was 16, I had to be in bed by 10. Well, can you believe that? <laughs> and when I left school and got a decent job, our ways parted. I took a flat of my own, and for the next three years, we saw very little of each other. Then, 15 years ago, she came to Durban and bought this place. <laughs> and our separation was complete. And why did you come to Durban? Oh, we were born here. <laughs> and to Janice, there was no other place in the world to come up to it. Oh, that must be Dennis. He'll be wanting to take me off to lunch. Oh, you can go. Alan and I will look after here for you. <laughs> well, thanks a lot. I'll just get my bag. Uh, when will you be coming back here? Yeah? Not at all, if I can help it. <sighs> oh, I suppose I'll have to in order to dispose of Janice's things. And the uh, management of the hotel? Oh, I don't know. I think when the season ends, I'll put it up for sale. Dennis knows a chap in Joburg who'll manage it for me in the meantime. Oh, uh, lend me your pen, please. Thanks. I'll just jot down my hotel phone number. It's suite um, 441. There. Oh, right. The place will be like new when you come back. Once again, thanks a lot. I'll let Lieutenant Perry know you're looking after the flat for me. Right. Well, she is different. Mm, a real bombshell. Okay, you can stop staring now. Close the door and let's start searching. Well, well, well. Uh, what is it? We've established she had two bank accounts. One in the name of the hotel and another in her own name. Neither are looking very healthy. But now... Oh, a building society book. With a credit of 133,000 in it. <gasps> so much? Where did you find it? There was a false bottom in her jewellery box. It was in there. Hidden? Yes, Katie, hidden. And I wonder why. She was a very secretive type of person. Well, not with her normal bank accounts. Why was this hidden as though it were a guilty secret? And so much money, too. Look at it. Oh. Every six months, there has been 6,000 rand deposited. And it goes back for years, regular as clockwork. I can be bloody-minded, Alan. Do you think what I think? Blackmail, pay off? What else? Regular amounts paid in from nowhere. The money didn't come from the hotel. You can see from the accounts that it's, it's only broken even. Yes, and there's no sign of any investments. It's all very suspicious. One thing struck me when Linda Abbott was talking... Where did Janice get the money to buy a place like this? Even 15 years ago, it must have cost a small fortune. Yes, I thought of that too, but it wasn't prudent to ask just then. I mean, a working girl would never save up enough for a, a down payment on this place even. Well, now we've found the anomaly. 
Someone, somewhere, was sending her the equivalent of a thousand rand a month. Our task now is to find out who. It could be the killer's motive. Yes. If we find the donor, then I think we'll also find her killer. So how will you go about it? I don't know yet. But let's keep our promise to Linda and start tidying up the place. Then I'll go and get photocopies made of this building society book before I hand it over to Lieutenant Fourie. Right. Right. You do in here, and I'll do in the bedroom. One more oddity. Oh, what's that? There are several framed photographs here. Don't you see what I mean? No, not really. Janice Abbott suffered from an overdose of vanity, I think. Of course! All the pictures are of herself. Only herself. Alone in every single one of them. But it fits what we know of her character. While we're cleaning up, we might find a few snaps of her when she was younger. They might provide a clue. If there was a man in her life... He could well be the one she was blackmailing. There might be a picture of the two of them together. Oh, I enjoyed the dinner, Alan. Well, we found nothing else, did we? No snapshots, no diary or phone numbers. That Janice Abbott was a strange one, all right. We should talk to her sister again. Yes, that's next on the agenda. But something else is puzzling me. Oh, what? Why did her killer decide to do it now of all times? Because he was fed up paying her 12000 a year. But why now? Why not years ago when she first started milking him? Well, perhaps he can't afford it anymore and she threatened to blow the works. Mm, possibly. Whoever he is, he must have been very wealthy to have kept paying it for so long. Uh, how far back did the book go? Eleven years. Well, she probably got the money to buy the hotel from him. Which would mean he was paying her for more than 15 years. Wow. He must have done something awful. Perhaps another murder. Now, going back to what I was saying, why now? You could be right about him no longer being able to afford it. But having milked him for so long, she surely would have let him off the hook. Oh, no. I have a feeling that's not the case. Well, what other reason could there be? Say this fellow hasn't seen her since she's been paying up. Maybe he lives in Joburg, which might account for her moving to Durban so he couldn't find her. She collects off him for years, living a recluse-like existence, perhaps always fearing that one day he will find out where she is. But surely he'd know about the hotel. Not necessarily. Not if he just handed over the cash. To continue, Durban is a holiday city, mm -hmm. and thousands come here during the season. Say our killer was here on a rare holiday and saw her. Oh, she hardly ever went out. At eight every morning, she went down to the beach for a dip in the sea. She was a creature of habit, remember? Perhaps he saw her there and followed her back to the hotel. With a little bit of checking around, he'd soon be able to find out all about her. He decides to kill her and remove the threat that's been hanging over him for all these years. Would she have let such a man into her flat? Ah, I wonder. There might have been a reason to do so. She seemed a bit edgy when we spoke to her. Hmm, it's a good theory. Which is all it is at present. Tomorrow, I'll have a chat with Linda Abbott. We'll have a chat with her, you mean? Yes, the lieutenant told me about the money. Quite astonishing, isn't it? You've no idea from where it originated? Not a clue. Perhaps the profits from the hotel. Tell me, Miss Abbott, what did your sister do when she lived in Johannesburg? Oh, it's so long ago. It could be important. Well, all I know, she was a secretary in a big investment company. Couldn't tell you which one, though. For how long? Oh, um, three years, I think. What did she do immediately she left? Well, I told you, bought the hotel. Immediately? Yes, immediately. Now, if you don't mind, I must join Dennis on the beach. Yes, of course. And thanks for your help. Oh, and I must thank you for fixing up the flat. Oh. There'll be a manager arriving sometime next week. He'll be living in there. I'll see to it that your deposit is refunded and all other charges during your stay are cancelled. Well, that's very kind of you. No, no, but... please. I insist. It's the least I can do. Well, thank you. Uh, one last question before you go, Miss Abbott. Did your sister ever have a romantic attachment? <laughs> Janice, you must be joking. She hated men like cats hate water. Are you still lying here, Alan? I thought you were going in for a dip. The water's gorgeous. I will later. <sighs> deep in thought. Very deep. Well, there doesn't seem to be much left we can do now. We're up against the proverbial brick wall. Perhaps. I was thinking about Linda Abbott. No, don't give me that look. I wasn't thinking of her in that way. There's something about her, something oh. false. 
When we spoke to her, she was being very cautious and evasive. It's as though she wants me to stop probing and asking questions. Oh, she didn't strike me as being like that. She had a lunch date, that was all. I'm accustomed to watching people's eyes, Katie. I wouldn't say she was telling me lies, but she inwardly resented my questions. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I'm convinced that woman's hiding some facts from me. For example? Well, she possibly knows where the monthly payments came from and the reason for them. Well, why didn't you ask her point blank? Oh, that's not the way to do it. She'd merely say she doesn't know and become even more guarded. I'm convinced that something happened in Johannesburg 15 years ago. And that it was the reason why Janice Abbott was murdered. Oh, you've really got your teeth into it now, haven't you? Like a dog with a stolen string of bourrebos. Another thing. Do you think you'd recognize this fellow if you saw him again? Yes, I think so. Well, I think he's in Durban on holiday. Oh. So if we make a tour around the beachfront hotels this afternoon and this evening, we just might be lucky enough to spot him. And if we do? Well, that's as far as my interest goes. I'll find out where he's staying and let Lieutenant Furry know. A tour around the hotels will suit me fine. Now then, what about that dip in the sea? I'm exhausted, Alan. Yeah, so am I. Just as well I stuck to oh. drinking ginger ale. Yes, a marathon non-alcoholic pub crawl. All for nothing. Oh, well, I gave up hope three stops back. Oh, I still think it'd be easier to ask Linda Abbott a few very leading questions. Yes, yeah, you could be right. Okay. Tomorrow I'll pay her another visit. But no leading questions. I'll be tactful. Keep her off her guard and gradually squeeze little bits of info from her. She won't even realize it's happening. Oh, who can be phoning at this time of night? Hello? Would I be speaking to Miss Linda Abbott? Yes. Who's that? I spoke to Janice a few nights ago. She wouldn't tell me. Perhaps you will. Who is that? A man who wants the truth. I think you know who I am. You must be the man the, the police are looking for. The man who killed my sister. I just want to talk to you and find out the truth. Please. Leave me alone. I, I don't want to see you. I'll contact you again. No. No, it can't be. I must talk to Dennis. He'll know how to handle it. Come and look out of the window, Alan. Hmm? What is it? I think we're about to get a visitor. I recognize the balding head that got out of that police car. Hmm? Our friend Lieutenant Fourie. Hmm. He isn't going to be very pleased with us, you know. Oh, don't worry, Katie. I'll just blame all our nosiness on you. Because you're scared of him. <laughs> oh, terrified. Very well. I'll just flash in one of my dazzling smiles and admit to interfering in police business. And if I'm going to plead guilty, then the least you can do is open the door. Right. Hello, Mr. Rocco. Hello, Lieutenant. Please come in. Thank you. Oh, how nice. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Mrs. Rocco. I'm sorry it's so late at night. I did call twice earlier, but you were out. <laughs> we had a night on the town. And uh, rather a lot to drink. <laughs> <clears throat> I hope you weren't driving, sir. Oh, no, of course not, Lieutenant. We took taxis every inch of the way. Ah. Would you like to sit down? Uh, oh, give the Lieutenant a drink, darling. What would you like? I have uh, some whiskey or some brandy? Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, The license for this hotel does not extend to allowing guests to have alcoholic drinks in their rooms, Mr. Ah, uh, yes, of course. My, well, my uh, Lieutenant, we are being officious. So late at night, too. Yes, I'll admit it's late. <laughs> Oh, this case has been giving me a hard time. I'll have a brandy. Good. <laughs> no ice, I'm afraid. Who wants to spoil good brandy? <laughs> Actually, we were just about to go to bed. I hear that Miss Linda Abbott left you in temporary charge of her sister's flat. Yes. When we talked to her this morning, she seemed so distressed. We offered to help out. Oh, I'm sure she appreciated it. However, I gained the impression that Linda Abbott was quite cool about Janice's murder. Oh? Certainly not distressed. Cheers, Lieutenant. Oh, yeah, cheers. Cheers. <coughs> Ooh. Yeah, that is how a man should drink brandy. And uh, a lady. I suppose so, yeah. I, uh, 
I also heard from one of the maids that you thoroughly searched Miss Abbott's place. Well, we did have a nose around, yes. You know what women are like, Lieutenant. It was just curiosity. Oh, of course. You didn't uh, find anything that might have some bearing on this case, perhaps? Um, you would have been the first to know. I'm sure your men were very thorough when they searched, Lieutenant. Of course, of course, but... Uh, there's always a chance that something, some small item might not be detected. Mr. Rockall, you would do well to remember my advice about interference in a police case. I wouldn't think of it. We're in Durban for a holiday, remember? Um, another shot of brandy? Yeah, just one more before I go. Of course, if we do come up with a solution to the mystery, you won't mind if we pass it on to you? <laughs> you know, you people think life is like it is in the movies and detective stories. Tracking down a merciless killer takes a lot of hard and very boring work. Solution doesn't appear just like magic, you know. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I trust you're not driving that car, Lieutenant. <gasps> there is a constable waiting by in the wheel, Mrs. Rockall. I must be going. It's been a long day. Well, I'll see you to the door. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Rockall. Mrs. Rockall, good night. <laughs> good night. Good night, Lieutenant. <laughs> what tickles your fancy now? Just watch through the window, Alan. Hmm? No, no, don't let him see you. Ah. But if there's a constable in that car, he must be invisible. <laughs> it's all the rage these days, <laughs> having invisible constables. <laughs> <laughs> Flower Connection has just opened their flagship store in Linden, Johannesburg at 65 on 4th, situated in 4th Avenue. For fresh cut flowers, plants and florist accessories at wholesale prices, come to Flower Connection. Call Jenny on 076-951-9449 or visit our website at www.flowerconnection.com. Now the curtain is about to rise on Act Three of A Woman Alone. It's okay. There's no need to hurry. Oh, why? I just tried to phone Linda Abbott. Mm -hmm. They told me she and her boyfriend checked out at one this morning. She mumbled something about a sudden emergency and she had to get back urgently to Joburg. Oh, sounds fishy to me. Yes, damn suspicious. When you're out of the bath, we'll give the whole situation a rethink. I think best in the bath. Oh. Now, for instance, is it possible Linda could have murdered her sister? No, oh, I doubt that. The police would have certainly checked out her alibi. If there was any suspicion, they wouldn't have let her leave Durban. Hmm, if they knew she was leaving. Well, if she hasn't told them, they'll issue an arrest warrant. Nope. I think we can discard Linda as a mm. suspect. Nothing's changed, though, Alan. She must still be holding out the information you need to follow the case up. Oh, I could burn her. She's sure to be back in Joburg by now. Yes, and probably sleeping after the journey. <laughs> Old Hawks was owes you a favor or two. Oh, I could hardly ask him to interview Linda and get no, her... No, no, Alan, I don't mean that. But we could try to find out where Janice Abbott worked when she was living there. It could give you another lead. Hmm, yes, you're right. We know it was an investment company, and she mm. left it 15 years ago after three years working there. It's a long time to go back. They'll still have records. I'll get him to sound out Linda's financial situation at the same time. Perhaps times are hard in the dress designing business. But you've already said we can count Linda out as a suspect. Not entirely. She could have employed someone to do the dirty work for her. Between this hotel and Janice's Building Society account, she stands to inherit something in the region of a million and a half rand. Did I never thought of that. This boyfriend of hers, uh, Dennis something or other, I wonder if No, he... he'll be clean. The police will have checked on him, too. From what I saw of him through the window, he looks nothing like the man we saw standing outside here the night Janice Abbott was done in. 
He's tall, blonde, athletic, and certainly no older than 35. I'll phone old Hawkey now and see what he can do for me. As you say, he owes me a favor or two. Alan, I don't know. I just thought of something else which might help. Yes, what? Aunt Gladys. Aunt who? I haven't an Aunt Gladys, and nor have you. And even if I had... Janice Abbott had an Aunt Gladys in Peter Marisburg. Don't you remember her mentioning it? Good girl, of course. Mm, Can't remember the surname, though. Oh, let me think now. It reminded me of cans of... Uh, Yes, I've got it. Hines. Ah. Gladys Hines. Yes, dead right, I remember now. The problem is, she might not be alive after all these years. She had arthritis then, and it must have been at least 30 years ago. Well, it's worth a try. I suppose it is. But what are we likely to find out from her? I don't know. Perhaps some background. You never know, Janice might have been in contact with her. I mean, if not physically, by telephone. Yes. Her name might be in the directory. Now, wait a tick. There was a list of business phone numbers down in Janice's flat. Get yourself out of that bath while I go down and get it. If you're not out when I come back, I'll pour a bottle of iced water over Oh, just you dare, Alan Rockall. Just you try it. And you'll spend the next few weeks sleeping like a monk. Hmm. I've got it, as well as the Marisburg Directory. Oh. Aha, I see you finally managed to get out of the tub. Yes, your sleeping like a monk suits me less than it does you. Here, now, give me the directory. You check the list. Hmm, there are a couple of O-double-ones here, and... Hmm. Yes, look. Where O-double-three-one is. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, here it is. Yes, it's the Peter Maritzburg Diving Code. Uh-huh. Now, just give me a moment to look up the name. I wonder if one of those Joburg numbers would be Linda's. Well, it would make Linda out to be a liar because she said Janice hadn't contacted her for years. Let's see now. Right, here we are. Now, let me see that number. Oh, no. There's nothing like it. You've got the German spelling. Try the English version. H-I-N-E-S. Ah, of course. Ah, here they are. Right on target. Look, Alan. Hmm? It's even under the name Mrs. G. Hines. Great. So the old dolly must be younger than we thought. Right, I'll phone her. What? And spoil my day? It's a nice run up the Western Freeway. Let's drive and see her. It's far better than telephoning anyway. Okay, why not? Get your war paint on while I phone Hawksworth and tell him what I want. Thank you, Maud. Uh, Please... Help yourself to tea and biscuits. Thank you, Mrs. Hines. Oh, it's a beautiful place you have here. It has been in my husband's family for over 90 years now. Oh. He's been gone for close on 40 years. And you live here all on your own? Yes, I've got used to it. It was lonely at first, and it took me many years to face up to life without Harold. Then when I did, I was part of the house... And the house was part of me. Did the police inform you of Janice's death? I doubt if they knew we were related. No, I, I read about it in the newspaper. In fact, I was about to call on someone to arrange the funeral. And then I heard that Linda had come down from Johannesburg to manage things. Is, is she still in Durban? She left last night. She was the unruly one. If there was ever any trouble, it came from Linda. I don't suppose she's changed much. You say you're investigating poor Janice's death, Mr. Ruggle. Have you any clues? Could it have been a burglar? It was someone Janice knew. That's why I'm here. There's a strong possibility that the killer was a man from Janice's past. (laughs) I I don't think you'll find any man in Janice's past. She was a man-hater. But Linda more than made up for it. She's had more men than a Shongalore has feet. Something happened when Janice and Linda were living in Johannesburg, and it has a strong bearing on the case. I'm sure there must be some way you can help me. Well, I don't know whether the baby has any bearing on the case. It's the only incident I can really tell you about. There was a baby? Yes. She came here and stayed with me while she had it. Nobody was more surprised than me. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes, I've got all the names written down. 
I'll see you next week. What are all the names, Alan? He says a girl called Janice Abbott worked for a company called Tip Top Investments for three years. Wow. This is a list of all the board and managers. Just about everyone who could afford to pay what Janice was blackmailing them for. Oof, there's a lot. Hawksworth says he'll keep sniffing to see if he can find any dirty linen. Meanwhile, let's drive along the beachfront and have a slap-up dinner. Oh. We can go over all the known facts with a bottle of wine to loosen our memories. Oh, great idea. I'll be ready in five minutes flat. <laughs> if you are, it'll be a record. That's the second bottle, Alan, and we're still fog-bound. Ah, I've got all the facts hung up like washing on a line. I've examined them from every angle, and still the pieces don't fit together. Mm, and the wine's made me feel a little dizzy. <sighs> Let's get back to the baby. I still can't see what bearing it has on the... What's the matter, Katie? Shh, keep your voice down, Alan. That man over there, hmm? it's him. Good grief. You could be right. I'm sure of it. And by the look of it, the woman with him must be his wife. I'll wait here. You go quickly and phone Lieutenant Vereen. No, 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 not yet. I need to know more. Such as? Where he's staying. He could be in his hotel. He's paying his bill. So am I. Then we'll follow them. The waiter, the bill, please. I'm in a hurry. Sorry. Be careful, Alan. He could be dangerous, even though he doesn't look it. I've got it. Oh, the receptionist good. was very helpful. Mr. Steadfield, suite 1308. Good. Now you can tell the lieutenant. Not yet. Here, just look at this. Mm -hmm. The list Hawksworth gave me. Paul Steadfield, managing director of Tip Top Investments. We've got him, Katie. Right. That's all the evidence you need. Call the lieutenant. Come with me into the phone booth. <laughs> Clever. So you've memorized the number. I looked it up on the reception counter. Oh, good. Excelsior Hotel. Uh, hello. Uh, can you put me through to 1308, please? Hold the line, please. Helen, have you gone mad? Shh, just wait. Uh, Mr. Steadfield, my name is Alan Rockall, and I'd urgently like to speak to you. I'm in the hotel lounge. Um, what about? It's after ten o'clock. It's about Miss Janice Abbott. I see. I'll be waiting in a quiet corner of the lounge. Very well, I'll, I'll be down in a minute. <laughs> First of all, can I get you a drink? No, thank you. Please explain what you are and what you have to tell me. I've been studying the murder of Janice Abbott. My husband's an investigator. You are not connected directly with the police? No, this is private. We saw you standing outside the Wilmont Rise Hotel just before Miss Abbott was killed. You must know the police are looking for you. Yes, I, I know. It was only a matter of time before I plucked up sufficient courage to call in and tell them what I know. Oh, then you did kill Miss Abbott? I pushed her and she hit her head. At the time, I thought she was merely unconscious. I searched the flat and went back to her, and when I wasn't able to find what I was looking for, well, that was when I realized she was dead. I must have panicked and run. I, I don't know. It's all like a bad dream now. Was she blackmailing you? <laughs> no, not exactly. I wanted to see my son, Warren. That's what she called him, Warren. I wanted to know where he was, how he was doing at school. All the things a father should know about his only son. Mr. Steadfield, I don't think... Please, Katie, let Mr. Steadfield tell us in his own way. Now, if you don't mind, sir, from the beginning. I don't know why I should tell you. Rather, the police... Let should... me assure you, I think it is better to tell me first. You'll see why later. Very well. From the beginning. Fifteen years ago, Janice Abbott and I had an affair... It was very brief, and it caught me at a weak moment. She became pregnant, and, and it put her into a position where she could ruin me, and especially destroy my marriage. And yet, secretly, I was pleased. Moira and I were unable to have children, and the thought... the thought of having a child of my own thrilled me. 
I was only too ready to agree to Janice's demands. I paid her a lump sum, plus a six-monthly check to cover Warren's education. I wanted the very best for him, you understand. She went away and kept it a secret where she was living. At first, she promised to let me see Warren, but later refused, saying Warren must come of age before he knows who his father is. Now, this distressed me. I, I had to agree. Pardon me, but how did she get in touch with you? Now, Janice was a clever one. She used to write, but the letters were posted from all over. Cape Town, Rustenburg, Pretoria, just about everywhere. How did you pay her? Directly into a building society account number that she sent me. For 13 years, that is the only contact I've had with her. I see. And what happened then? I had to accept the situation and wait until Warren was 18. But then Moira and I decided to take a holiday here in Durban. One morning, I saw Janice on the beach. She changed very little from when I knew her. Beautiful, aloof, and cold. I begged her to let me know where Warren was, but she refused. I followed her to the hotel and discovered that she owned it. She must have bought it using the 150000 I gave her as a down payment. Wow, 150000 It was worth it to avoid the scandal. Or so it seemed at the time. Late that night, I couldn't sleep, and I phoned Janice and begged her to let me call and see her. I was determined, you see, to force the whereabouts of my son from her. She agreed, and I went to the hotel. I stood outside for several minutes trying to compose myself and to rehearse the argument I was going to use. And that was when you passed me. Then I went in and found her standing in the doorway. She gave me a drink but adamantly refused to tell me anything about Warren. We quarreled and I pushed her. Well, I've told you the rest. I searched the flat looking for a photograph, an invoice, a school report, something that might give me a clue as to where my son was staying, but there was nothing. It was as if he had been wiped off the face of the earth. And does your wife know anything about this? Moira? No, I have never had the heart to tell her. She's a very sensitive woman. It would have caused her a lot of... a lot of distress. But I'm afraid it will be a secret no more. Now, why did you say it was better for me to talk to you before the police? Because you don't know the whole story. What else is there to know? Brace yourself for a shock, Mr. Statefield. All right. Now I'm braced for the worst earthquake nature can throw at me. Well, this may affect you even more. Let me tell you what really happened 15 years you ago. You think I don't know? Take my word for it, you don't know. Janice's sister, Linda, was a very promiscuous teenager. She became pregnant, and elder sister Janice worked out a plan to make it profitable. She became intimate with you, overcoming her natural hatred of men, and later told you it was she who was pregnant. Janice and I were only intimate once. Well, once can be enough. Now, wait a minute. What are you suggesting? Please, please, hear me out. The two girls went to their aunt at Bietermaritzburg where the child was born. He was christened Warren and registered as Janice's child. For a hefty monthly payment, the aunt looked after the child. You mean Warren wasn't mine after all? To be brutally frank, Mr. Steadfield, you were conned by Janice Abbott out of a small fortune. Uh, are you sure of this? Absolutely. The baby photos you received were of Linda's child. This, this is horrifying. And the worst is to come. When the boy was only two, he was struck down by pneumonia and died. It didn't take Janice long to realize she could easily continue milking you. You didn't know where she was, so how could you prove there was no son? She continued to let you know, with the occasional letter, that Warren was well. Am I right? Yes. Yes, she wrote about the naughty things he got up to, how he was progressing at school. <laughs> but really, this is quite unbelievable. That true, I'm afraid. So... I have no son. No. Excuse me. I, I'm trying to stop myself from, from crying. All these years, I... I... I know what a shock it must be for you. I don't know what to do. Everything in my life is gone. I, I have no son. The future for Moira and me is bleak, to say the least. I suggest you tell the police as soon as possible after you've told your wife. It could be dangerous to brood over it. I don't think the future is as bleak as you think it will be. And I'm sure if your wife loves you, she'll stand by you. Oh, she will. She will. Go up now and tell her. 
And then in half an hour, I'll telephone Lieutenant Ferry and say you want to make a statement about Miss Abbott's death. Yes, I, I must face up to it. And thank you for bringing matters to a head. Now that I'm forced into making a decision, it, it will be easier. Yes, I'll go up now and talk to Moira. She'll be wondering where I am. Thirty minutes will be just enough time. And again, thank you. You, you don't think he'll do anything silly, do you, Alan? Like, like killing himself? No, he's not the type. Or pack his things and, and make a run for it? He's intelligent enough to know it will be a waste of time. Oh, no. He'll face the music and be relieved that he has. If you'll just sign this, please, Mrs. Rocco. Yes. What do you think will happen to him? Oh, I'd say the charges will be reduced to manslaughter. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he didn't get a suspended sentence. I felt so sorry for him last night. So did I, to be honest. By the way, everything you said has been confirmed. Linda Abbott admits her sister set out to Constabfield, but she says she didn't know Janice kept up the pretense after the child's death. That's possible, I suppose. Will you be continuing with your holiday in Durban? Certainly. <laughs> Please, no more trying to solve mysteries. The only mystery we'll be working on is how to beat a roulette wheel. <laughs> now that is what I call a real mystery. <laughs> we'll go down to the wild coast this afternoon. If you have the money, honey, I'll be right beside you. Woman Alone by Ron Evans, you heard Harold Freed as Alan Rockall, Maureen Adair as Katie Rockall, Jill Fenson as Janice Abbott, Caroline Smart as Linda Abbott, Frank Graham as Lieutenant Fourie, John Simpson as Steadfield, and Midge Doherty as Gladys Hines. The play was produced by Anne Freed.